mentor for uh, making you understand about green building rating systems in India. I have been working in the field of uh, green building consultancy and architecture interior design for the past five years. So have been working on uh, lots of projects of small scale to larger scale projects and medium as well and have worked on a few international projects as well apart from the Indian projects. So this particular program is uh, to make you understand about the green building rating system in India. So the complete focus of this program is going to be the systems, those are there in Indian context. So when I say Indian context, majorly, majorly that you will see in the market when you practice is either Greha or it is IGBs or lead IGBs, lead India, basically. So these are the main ones. Apart from this, we do have GEM. We do have US, under USGBC, we have LEED as well, which is an international uh, green rating systems, system that is uh, accepted worldwide. So to begin with, as we all must be, might be, I won't say must be, but we all might be aware of the kind of impact our building have on the environment. So when we talk about the green building rating systems, these majorly emphasizes on conserving the environment, conserving the mother earth for the future use. That is what nowadays is the hot topic. That's one of the prime reason why Indian government has stepped up and have made all the major projects in India compulsorily go under green rating system. Now, if I broadly tell you about, it would be CPWD and PWD projects specifically, which has no like uh, hideout. They have to undergo a green rating system. And mostly if it is, it is emphasized on three-star rating under a Greha or IGBC, at least uh, gold, gold star rating is what is uh, the main emphasis by the central government for all these noteworthy projects. So that makes it very much important for all the person who are involved in this industry to get into this and understand this particular thing. Simple reason behind that is that you need to develop, you need to develop what the market demands from you, what your industry demands from you, right? So that's, so these are certain facts to begin with. So globally, if we talk about buildings are responsible for at least, at least 40% of energy consumption. And uh, if I have to say on a very single line, the moment we make a building at a particular piece of land, that's the point where we have started hampering the environment. That particular piece of land has its own identity, has its own importance in this world on the earth, but we hampered it. And that's the quite first step that we go ahead with tampering with the environment. Now, definitely, we as humans need more of more of uh, space to live, live in. We are way ahead than what we used to be. And now everyone needs a shelter, a basic shelter. That's the basic need of any human. And that's called for coming up with the buildings. Now, when we make the building, that's the necessity. But in that necessity, there is a certain necessity of the environment as well. And that is what we need to take care of. So on an estimate, 40% of energy consumption in the world is done through buildings. You need lighting for it. You need uh, services like elevator, escalators. You need uh, pumping. You need air conditioning. All these types of things are there that takes up energy. And estimated 42% of the global water consumption is done in the buildings. That's true. 50% of the global consumption of raw material, the raw material those are present out of which we make our uh, construction materials 
uh, 50% that we account for. Why I'm saying we is yes, we are in the AEC category and we need to take care of it. 50% of the world's air population is because of construction. So if you see any kind of city developing infrastructure wise with lots of infrastructure development, the buildings coming, you will see lots of air pollution is there. A lot of contamination of uh, small particles in the air you will see. So buildings account for 50% of the air pollution that we have. 42% of its greenhouse comes from building. 50% of the water pollution comes from building. 48% of all solid waste that is generated in the world from the building. There are certain benefits. Definitely there has to be. That's the reason why the system is there. So there are certain benefits of green building that it consumes 40 to 60% lesser electricity. It consumes 40 to 60% less energy, electricity, compared to a normal conventional building. Attempt to work toward on-site energy generation through renewable energy utilization to cater to its energy needs. Simple could be the most simple one would be solar panel. You install solar panels, it takes up some energy, convert it into electricity for you and you reduce your electricity bill. The other could be if it is a big housing, there you see lots of time, even in single villas, standalone villas also, where we can install, but normally in India it is adopted in uh, large campuses where we come up with solar water heaters. So that's one of the good solutions to conserve the energy. Consumes 42, 80% less water. How? We'll be talking about Generate lesser water by employing waste management strategies on site. On site, there will be lots of types of waste management strategies that will be taken care of. Generate less pollution both during construction as well as while in use. So any kind of building, it's not just our responsibility to, okay, it's in construction phase, we need to take care. After that, it's not our headache. No, it's not like that. We need to be responsible. We need to make ourselves more responsible towards Mother Earth, right? And that's the thing that calls up for coming up with strategies that can even have lesser impact on the pollution points even after construction while in use. Green building ensures proper safety, health and sanita sanitation facilities for your workers, those working on your site work on your design to create the real thing of your imagination into reality those also needs to be ensured with certain amount of safety health and sanitation we we'll talk about all those things as well restrict the use of high odp ozone depleting potential substances in their systems as well as in their finishes so all these things will gather information uh, slowly and gradually now, if we talk about, we have talked about a lot, green buildings, what are the impact, what are the pros and the cons, what is green building rating system? So, whatever we have to do, why don't we actually do it without these systems? So, any kind of thing to be done need enforcement and these are the enforcement authorities basically. So, a green building rating system is an evaluation tool that measures environmental impact of a building through its life cycle. It's not only about those two, three years, five years of construction period that you focus on. No, it's about the, throughout the life, how much energy it will consume, how much it can save compared to a normal baseline conventional building. Right? It usually comprises of set of criteria covering various parameters to related to the design construction and operation of a green building each criterion has pre-assigned points and sets performance benchmarks and gets that are uh, goals that are largely quantified a project is awarded points once it fulfills the rating criteria the points are added up and final rating of project is decided rating systems call for independent 
third party evaluation again. so we'll try to understand what are the stages of rating systems as well while documenting the project 